Have Shell Oyster House August features are now available. Enjoy their bourbon bacon jam oysters. Fresh baked Gulf oysters topped with homemade bourbon bacon jam and gorgonzola cheese. Have something with a bit more zing, like the Royal Red Cocktail. Cajun boiled Royal Red Shrimp chilled with a cocktail of Zing Zang Bloody Mary mix, avocados, cucumbers, tomatoes, red onions, and cilantro, served with crisp wonton chips. The citrus ginger glazed salmon is wild caught Atlantic salmon, char grilled and based with orange juice, fresh ginger, honey, and soy sauce over a bed of pineapple rice. Served with your choice of side or side salad. A perfect summer dish at Half Shell Oyster House, located at 115 Laura Park Cove, Suite 105, Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. Or you can give us a call at 769 257 7586. And oh, yeah, tell them Sonya sent you. She said, she said, she said, she said, sports. She said, she said, she said, she said, sports. She said, she said, she said, she said, sports. She said, she said, she said, she said, sports. <laughs> hey, Asha girl, Sonia, and welcome back to She Say, She Say Sports. Today, I have with me Emmy Award winner and new Assistant Athletic Director for Strategic, Communi bleh, Strategic Communication at Alcorn University, Mr. Josh Jackson. Hi, Josh. How are you? How's it going? And listen, you don't have to name my title. I tell people all the time, you can call me whatever you want as long as it's not late for dinner. I'm That's good. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving you a little swag love. You know, I'm a JSU girl and grad and alumni. And I also well, went to um, Belhaven as well. So that's where I got my master's in sports administration. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. But the last time I saw you, it was at um, the SWAC championship press yeah. conference. And I was so shocked. I'm like, what is he doing here? Because, you know, <laughs> the last time I saw you, you were leaving WAPT. So you're back at home now. Yeah, yeah. I spent some time uh, when I left WAPT. I took a job in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, wasn't doing sports. Well, I did sports occasionally, but I was there to be a news anchor and uh, and news reporter. So that was uh, a little bit different because you know, I'd worked so many years in sports. Right, uh, right. But thing I liked about the news side is having the weekends off because in sports, oh, yeah. sports it's, happens it's you know, on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it never ends. Yeah, man, that is true. That is true. So, okay. Well, uh, I know your family is glad you're back home. Yes. Yes. It's uh, much closer and I'm just four hours away now here in Lorman. If we could um, uh, get a, <laughs> get a Kroger out here oh, no. and a Walmart, you know, you got to drive to Port fine. Gibson. <laughs> so what's the what is the closest um grocery store in walmart uh for me is natchez which is about 35 minutes away okay um uh, uh, that's the walmart or you can go to vicksburg it's 45 minutes either way uh vicksburg or natchez and then uh of course uh kroger like i'm a big kroger guy that's that's yeah. my grocery store <laughs> so you have to go to vicksburg uh, for that one so uh but I'm, I'm you know I've been on campus here several times just covering games mm -hmm. so I'm familiar uh but that's usually just for one day and you're back you know I've never been right. like living in Lorman I, I just used to be upset on my way back from the JSU Alcorn game and it taking five hours to get back because like because it's car it's after car in. yeah, yeah. In. absolutely that yeah that that could be frustrating well um hey um, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, you know, um, get, just have you a good day on Saturday. Well, no, you can't because you'll be at games. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I got here early last week. I did a, a little work remotely before, you know, they got here and made the announcement mm -hmm. and stuff. But like my official, I started, uh, I guess, Monday and then Tuesday or whatnot. But, okay. um, but like since I've gotten here, like I really haven't had a day. We had a scrimmage Saturday uh, and there's some other stuff with other sports going on. Yesterday uh, was at the uh, soccer game, our women's soccer team opened. So it's, uh, 
you know, it's, it's all the sports. And right now it's fall sports. So we have women's soccer, uh, we have volleyball, we have football. And uh, in a, about, I guess about a day or so, well, maybe two days from now, um, we'll be heading out with the football team to uh, Atlanta for the SWAC MEAC Challenge. So uh, it's a busy time of the year, but it's, it's a, a lot of uh, excitement. Uh, I'm so excited because um, I actually just got off the phone with um, uh, one of the producers for Good Morning America. So uh, oh, wow. been able, yeah, we, we've um, uh, today, that's kind of my role to kind of be the liaison between the football team and, and media mm-hmm. outlets and trying to get publicity. That's that's my job here to gain publicity for the program. Okay. And we have uh, secured a spot on Good Morning America Friday morning. Uh, our football team, uh, Coach McNair and his players, uh, they will be highlighted. Uh, and then uh, we will also be on GMA3, which is the, the new segment that comes on uh, mm-hmm. a little bit later uh, with TJ with Holmes. And so we'll be on that. And then Saturday morning, uh, we'll be on college game day um, outside of uh, uh, the uh, stadium there uh, in Atlanta. And uh, I'll just say this, you know, uh, this is just the third time that college game day has uh, featured two HBCU teams, you know, pitted mm-hmm. against each other. And um, I think it would be just an iconic moment in, uh, to see Lee Corso put on the headgear of Alcorn State. Yeah. So we'll see if that happens, but just you know, <laughs> Alcorn State fans will be watching. Just... I will be watching for sure. <laughs> you have been a busy bee. I mean, <laughs> yes, yes. But that's, hey, that's your thing. That's, that's your job. So you've been making things happen. But yeah. before we discuss more in your role, I want to go way back. Well, not too, too far back. You're not that old. So just a little bit back um, when you played defensive back at Belhaven University. (laughs) And, you know, like I just mentioned to you, I have my master's there, sports administration. But sadly, I've never gone to a Blazer football game. I I got to do better. Um, I live in Belhaven. Oh, okay. I, I got to do better. And go to a game, you know, I'm, I'm a Tiger fan, you know, I bleed blue and white, I'll be going to Miami next week, but I have to, you know, when we're out of town, I, I was like, you know, I'm gonna check out a game, I, I really, I'm gonna do it. So, have you, um, when you graduated um, from Bell Haven, did you still support the football team in any capacity? Well, Yes and no. I always, you know, try to contribute as much as I possibly can. Absolutely. And uh, they make sure to, you know, send you something in the mail to make sure. <laughs> <you> get <laughs> <back> to- <laughs> I get those. <laughs> but um, I was closely connected one uh, because number one, um, one of the assistant coaches used to live in the same neighborhood I did because I was around Jackson for a couple of years. I was a, I started off as a, uh, a lot of people know this, as a photographer and an editor mm-hmm. and live truck operator at WAPT because I had an internship there my senior year of college. And so I was around for a couple of years before I moved to Louisiana uh, to do uh, weekend sports. And then in it, uh, doing some work in Canton, Mississippi with the Christian nonprofit and then going to WAPT as a weekend sports anchor there, then moving up to sports director. Uh, so I've, I've kind of kind of been around, but uh, because for, I guess, two years out of college, um, I was still in Jackson, in the Jackson mm-hmm. area because, I, you know, after I graduated uh, from Bellhaven, I covered a couple of, of those games uh, just as a freelancer, because I was working on the new side at the time, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, uh, who was the sports, uh, Aslan Hodges was the sports director, and Ray mm-hmm. Coleman, who's one of my great friends and great mentor, he was my, uh, he was the weekend guy at the time, and eventually, uh, Ray ended up moving up to sports director, and uh, hired me on as his weekend guy, and then when he left, I moved up to sports director, so uh, but make a long story short, back to the Bellhaven side, I did get a chance to cover them a lot and, and support them. Um, and uh, because the same coach that was there when I was there, well, he came in my sophomore year, he was still there. And so he would call me and uh, his name is Joe Thrasher. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's no longer a coach and he's in education now. And then I didn't really have a, a real connection with how mommy, but I did have a really still do have a, a good connection with coach McCorkle who's the head coach there now um 
and he understands the South, I think, a little bit better than Mommy did. Uh, Coach McCorkle played at uh, at LSU, has a lot of connections uh, to the South, and so uh, have his cell phone number. And so we 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 kind of stay in touch. And uh, that guy's Jack too; he doesn't miss a uh, arm or leg day. So uh, I try to try to stay on his good side. <laughs> So do you still um, keep in contact with Coach Thrasher um, or any other coaches? Not not necessarily Coach Thrasher. Um, mm -hmm. I've lost his contact information or he's changed it or we we kind of. But every time we uh, I saw him at Table 100, probably mm -hmm. about three years ago, three or four years ago, whenever we had a, a Blitz 16 uh, banquet. Uh, there and he was there and he's actually in ministry now and so he'll, okay. he'll always they call me JJ and call you say JJ you need to come check check out my church and 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 all this good stuff so whenever I see him we catch up but I just don't you know he has you know family now two or three kids and so he's really busy and uh, yeah. but uh but yeah he's a great guy he was a great coach uh an even better man um and uh, I was just blessed to have him for those two years I, I did so what is something he taught you that you still um, pretty much still apply to your life today? One of the most important things I ever remember, remember him saying is education is paramount. And he, he understood, um, I guess, the dynamics of going to uh, a liberal arts college that's also a Christian university because you know let, let's just be honest um you know I uh I've grown up but you know you when you're in your college years you want to have a lot of fun and you want to do some things that uh maybe <laughs> maybe at BU it's not as acceptable uh so you you have to you'd have to slip over to JSU's campus for you know don't um, do us Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm, listen, listen. What I mean by that is this. They had, see. I know what you mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, you, you can I mean, have a little coming, bit more. Going it's, from it's, Jackson State to Bellhaven, you know, it, and, and that's what I love about Bellhaven is they do um, apply the biblical principles in every, you know, in every class. And that was important to me because I grew up in a Christian home. So it, it was, you know, I, I, tr I totally understand. Yeah. I, get it. I get it. I mean, I was having clean fun regardless. It was just, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way. A party at Bellhaven is not going to be like on no. it, like, like one at, I'm just being honest, you know, and I love my alma mater, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, but uh, I think what he understood was that a lot of us players, and again, I'm really, really, really introverted. I'm not a big party guy at all, but I, every now and then I like, like to have fun back then. And so what he understood was um, where he was. Like he understood 80% of the guys that are on, on that team. Uh, they're not so, so much interested in reading the Bible, praying, going to chapel. Uh, and I was a Christian and I wasn't, you know, gung-ho about doing that myself. You know, we grow right. mature as Christians. But he understood that at the same time, um, he found creative ways to get messages across us, whether it was a biblical message and, and he knew how to connect with us. Uh, and also he stressed the importance of education. He obviously, ed your education is paramount. And that means if you have a class at six o'clock and we're at practice, first of all, don't schedule a class uh, that, that late, but if we're still at practice, you know, like he would understand that and he had us in study hall the whole now. And so that's something that he would, he would oftentimes preach. And, and I can say without a shadow of doubt, uh, he definitely practiced what he preached there. That's good. That's awesome. So um, you were also a student ambassador. You, you were pretty busy. So yeah. tell me the duties of a student ambassador. Yeah, just uh, pretty much make the university look good. And, and also when, you know, prospects come on campus, talking to them. And I would honestly just give them uh, the real, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Because if you think you're coming there and you're going to experience the usual college life, at least, you know, what you would think, it's not going to happen, at least not on campus. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to move off campus. And I tell people all the time, you know, um, you know, they say, well, it's a Christian university. Listen, some of the best partiers in the world are Christians, you know. <laughs> so, that is true. <laughs> hey, Jesus turned that water into wine. So, you know. <laughs> that but, is uh, true. 
but yeah, that was just the, you know, representing the university. And, and I think they understood to um, the importance of having diversity on that team. I, you know, when I first got there, you know, everything I felt like other than the football team and the basketball, other than athletics, didn't really look like me, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it, it's kind of a culture shock, if you will, because I came, you know, I grew up down on the Gulf Coast, uh, Moss Point, and uh, Moss Point's that one city on the Gulf Coast, um, you know, everybody talks about the Gulf Coast, and it looks so great, well, that Moss Point's that one city that does it, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. the I sometimes, you know, joking with people, I liken it to Compton, but uh, it, it's, 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 it's kind of the hood, you know, and so it was different. I'm, I'm coming from a school that's, you know, 90, 90% black, 95% black. And you go to a totally different environment where I'm, I'm in classes as a freshman um, with students that were homeschool or they came from private schools. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's, you know, I'm, I came from a lean on me school, you know, and so, you know, it's, Joe Black. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh and so uh, because my, my junior and senior years, the um, State Department of Education had threatened to take over. Though, that's how bad we were. But they have made mm -hmm. um, some huge changes. Uh, and uh, it's like, a, I think, a C school now. So uh, I'm excited. We're, we're headed in the right direction. That's yeah. right. And that's all that matters. I mean, JPS, we, I went to Provine. So, you know, they had some situations a few years ago. I don't know if you were still here when that was going on, but okay. you know, they were threatening to take over as well. Um, so, but we're back on track and, um, you know, so yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. It was that 2,400, right? Or 1,400? 2,400. 24. That's, I had it right. That's first. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I had a couple of co-workers that uh went there marcel uh walker yeah. who passed uh that breaks my teacher. heart yeah, yeah he was such i met him when i was interning at jackson state with my uh, master's and uh, working in media and he was really funny always yeah. joking so uh yeah that was he was yeah he was a he was a ram he still is a ram so yeah, yeah. so you know what yeah. before we end i have to show you something uh with marcel something marcel and i did that you you will get a kick out of please uh, before we end. yeah okay yeah I, absolutely remind me now please um please remind me so if i forget so you were a mass communications major but i read something where it said that you had a love for television during middle school what triggered that love yeah well to be honest with you i'd be outside and i was always that guy you know when you're playing basketball what basketball was my first love I just, I don't know, my hype max feels didn't work, uh, <laughs> my, you know, and everybody, like my dad's 6'3", my uncles, you know, they're like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and I ended up being like right under six feet, and right. plus, I was a big, because my my uncles, and stuff, they were, you know, you need to be down on, on the low block in the post, so I tried to grow up thinking I'm be a post player, and not developing guard skills, and like you get to, I was strong, Mm -hmm. But uh, you get to it's like nah. But um, foot basketball actually was my first love. But uh, football was what I was much better at, and uh, so I'd be playing, you know, in the community and stuff like that. But I was always the guy. I loved um, uh, Kevin Harlan and Marv Albert, and so I would be the guy that would be out there, and I'd be like Jackson for three, you know, as we were playing. <laughs> And so, and so they would oftentimes say, well, you know, JJ, this is this is what you need to do, you know, or this is what you need to, and um, you know, I, uh, eighth grade, uh, Miss Watts um, down on the coast, I got in her journalism class, and mm -hmm. I just fell in love with it. So I, you know, I was in journalism club uh, in high school, and um, got to college. Uh, actually, my first year in college, I was a sports med major. Um, Okay. But um, Dr. Anthony, who's at Jackson State now, she's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I do some adjunct teaching for her. Um, she was the uh, department chair at Bellhaven. And she had talked to me and I, you know, I'd always wanted to do it. She was like, I think you'd be, and uh, fooled around and switched majors and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. It's amazing how your path is, you know, it's already ordered and it's just you playing around as a kid and now Look at you now. You're gonna be on Good Morning. Y'all gonna be on Good Morning America this week. Yeah. So God is amazing. He really is. 
So you also renamed Young Alumnus of the Year. I mean, did I do anything at Bellhaven? <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, man. So I saw um, you received that award in 2018, and they surprised you at WAPT. I think I, I vaguely remember that. Mm -hmm. How did that? How was that moment for you? Well, um, I'll be honest with you. The surprise wasn't as surprising because mm -hmm. the assignment desk editor uh, told me because it was during the summer, mm -hmm. and so uh, I think I was I was at. I may have been leaving JSU at the time. Uh, was Tony Hughes there? Maybe it was Coach Hendrick. I was leaving some school. And so a lot of times during the summer, you know, people don't wouldn't see this, but I would wear shorts, you mm -hmm. know, and I would just have a suit on up top, whatever, and I'd tell right, them, right. you know, crop it up. Well, uh, that's because I'd be leaving practices and stuff like that. And, you know, I'd just freshen up up top and come up. And he told me because he knew I would be doing that and it's hot in the summer. He was like, uh, I'm just going to give you a heads up. Mm -hmm. They're going to. And so literally, yeah, I guess it's about 20, 30 minutes before. So I kind of watched and I threw on like the WAPT <laughs> shirt and whatnot. So I knew that. But what was more special was the actual ceremony, which happened like two months later okay. uh, during homecoming. Um, it was uh, the day before the homecoming game. Uh, it was on the campus in the, um, uh, the one of the newest buildings that they have out there. And uh, it just meant the world to me because Dr. Perry, uh, he did something that really made my day. And I've heard this saying before, they say people uh, will forget um, what you did for them, but they'll never forget how you, how you make how them make feel. feel. Yeah. And he did something that like, it was like, wow, because I didn't really know Dr. Perry when I was at Bill. I and mean, what student knows the president? You know, mm -hmm. we'd have some meetings, student leadership meetings, but, you know, he didn't know me like that. And he came and he talked to me about some of the things, some of the stories that I'd covered. And I was like, oh, he actually watches. And then he, he got up as he was introducing me. He said, you know, it's time to tell sports when Josh Jackson says, hi, I'm Josh Jackson. And he puts his hand in his pocket. And I always <laughs> And I was like, oh, he actually watched. I remember and, uh, that. <laughs> I remember that. That is and so cool. And it was just cool, a though. natural thing. He, I would um, somebody told me, speaking of Alcorn, it was an Alcorn mm -hmm. alum who worked at WAPT. And one day, I don't, I, I it, it just kind of naturally happened. I had the, my papers in one hand and I just put my hand in my pocket and she was over in sales. And she said, she said, uh, Josh, she said, you need to do that more. Like that was a really good look. And I said, oh, really? So every day I just, I just I remember would say, that. hi, I'm Josh Jackson. I put my hand in the pocket and they were like, it sticks. And, and then after I would end on the morning show, I would always say, enjoy your day and take some time to smile. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was the, the best That's part funny. to me was not necessarily the surprise, but that, that day. And then I got an opportunity to thank uh, my mom, who to me played just an integral role in, in my success. Uh, and of course, my dad. And I talked about the fact that, you know, uh, and, uh, Dr. Anthony was there too. Mm -hmm. uh, all those people and some of the people that kind of helped me along the way at Bellhaven. But, but most importantly, it was, you know, my mom and, and what she had done just in terms of developing me. Um, because, you know, we had very humble beginnings. I can remember, and I'm not ashamed to tell this, but right. before we moved to Moss Point, you know, I, I lived in Grand Bay, Alabama, uh, still down there on the coast. Uh, but we didn't have much. It was five of us. And uh, there was only one person working in the household. Uh, my dad, he worked. Uh, my mom, she came off of her job. Uh, my dad asked her to. And I, I didn't understand it why when I was younger, but she was there every day, like training me. She was a former teacher. Mm -hmm. But we, um, I used to be so embarrassed. I didn't never wanted to get dropped off the bus at my house. I say house, but it was a single wide trailer that was about two or three tones. And, uh, you know, it was just very beat up and whatnot, but we stayed in that trailer until I was about in eighth or ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And then we got a double wide mobile home, which I thought we were, we were living large at that point. And then my junior year of high school, we lost that uh, in Hurricane Katrina. So my, uh, the rest of my junior year and my senior year, I lived in a FEMA trailer. Um, and that was how I graduated wow. high school in a FEMA trailer. Yeah. And it was seven of us at the time. It was five kids and, you know, and mom and dad. So. Uh, but I'm I'm just blessed now, you know, yes. the sacrifices that they made, I'm able to kind of, you know, benefit from them. So 
uh, when I get my first check from uh, uh, my new my new job here, you know, obviously I always give my tie to re- I say return my tie because it's his That's anyway. I don't like I don't like to say I'm giving my yeah I, I like I agree I agree I'm sorry to cut you off but yeah no I'm, I'm with you. I give it back and then it's time to show some love, you know, to mom and and, and right. dad and um you know because there's no place you can go or no success you can experience without someone helping you along the way. So right. you're absolutely right. And you know, and it's you know, you kept pushing and moving towards your dreams and your goals and look what happened. And yeah. and you still honoring your parents and that's a great thing really a great thing um you know you you spent um you had 10 plus years in broadcasting and you you know we talked about my favorite was blitz 16 so that was the (laughs) highest rated um um high school um state show during that time so yeah i love that but when you went to ohio you um you mentioned that earlier you were anchor reporter at WHIO in Dayton, which is the number one CBS affiliate in the nation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, speaking of parents, you helped with, with an I-team investigation that led to an arrest of parents who, who were abusing a child. And after several reports revealed the child was being abused that whole time. And, well, you know, sadly, he was killed by his parents in 2019. Mm-hmm. As a reporter, I know you have to do your job. But how much of a challenge was you, was it for you as just Josh, as a human being, having to um, report this story? And how was that for you? Yeah, well, I never wanted to be desensitized ever because I see so many different things in news. And I remember even when I was a, uh, working at WAPT as a photographer before I, you know, uh, got my first job in sports, I would see a lot of, you know, dead bodies and I would see, and and it is, you see so much of it, you almost become sensitized, but I never wanted to be that way. And I would always, you know, I try my best, you know, uh, if I'm covering, it's a bad car accident or whatever. And so when I, I try to, you know, pray for the family, you know, just, you know, I know everybody doesn't, you know, agree what I do. So I'd say it silently or in my mind. Uh, but that was difficult because if you go back and actually look at the records, it had been documented like school teachers had, but they always found a way to get around and his dad did. And uh, it just really hurt me because the, uh, especially the way he died to like, like them holding him underwater and um, Dakota Collins is his name. And I'll never forget the name. Um I, I just, I, I, I wanted like, how did he slip through the cracks, you know? And, uh, and two, it's helped me understand kids more because I, I do a lot of volunteering right. in, in different school districts, but people wonder why certain kids are acting out. And this kid, they said that he was, he was acting out. Um, but one of the reasons this kid was acting out because he, he was being abused at home, you know? And so if you don't know a person's story, um, you know, everything's not cookie cutter. It's not like this child's bad. And this, you know, you've got to get down to, uh, as I say, the, the nitty gritty. And, right. you know, it was just, it was tough for me, like to, to go through some of those readings. And uh, because I hate when two adults can't resolve an issue and, and you have to resort to violence. But, and, and, and I, you know, I have, you know, mercy, you know, grace for them, but it's just hard to you know have any pity for someone like a child because that child can't defend him or herself can't defend himself. and yeah. you know it amazes me how we have to get licensed to be to hunt to get married to drive but not a license to be a parent yeah i understand you have Ooh, the yeah you have the the equipment to be you know to become a parent mm-hmm. but you everybody should not be a parent and <laughs> Even though your parents didn't have a lot, they were parents to you and they loved you and they took care of you and they fed you and clothed you. You know, it may not have been the best in, in your eyes mm-hmm. at that time, but they took care of you. I remember going to see the movie Precious and I never want to see that movie again. But when I, I had just moved back here from Dallas and 
my my father had just passed away maybe a few months earlier and I I got in the house and I hugged my mother and I said I just thank God for you and daddy you know Mm. because that could have been my story and so you know it's just it's it's very hurtful that that happened to him you said Dakota Collins uh, Dakota Collins, uh-huh. Dakota. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's you know, but I you know I know where he is, and you know it's just I'm glad you guys were able to get them off the street before they hurt anybody else. Did they have any more children? Oh no, that was just one. Thank God, because I mean he gives children to parents to take care of them. You know, mm-hmm. he, it's a gift, and yeah. <sighs> unfortunate, very unfortunate. It is broke yeah. my heart. Yeah. So, well, Josh, you're back at home, as we mentioned earlier, and, you know, you've already explained some of the things that you're doing. Um, you guys are going to Good Mer- Morning America. Um, with your strong background in marketing and communication, what plans do you have to take this role to the next level? Uh, well, number one, we just have to, and I say we because I'm I look, looking at it as a collective team effort. Mm-hmm. Um we have got to find a way to get our message out. Um, you know, most people know, you know, when it comes to all corn state sports or, you know, football, they've won, you know, five consecutive SWAC East titles. Um, well, you know, we didn't play in the spring or whatnot. And, but it's like people kind of get on the bandwagon towards the end of the year. But this is, there's been some consistency here. Um, starting with Jay Hobson uh, several years ago, and okay. and that success has continued with uh, Coach uh, McNair. But a lot of the times, we don't get as much publicity. And one of the reasons is I understand why, especially in the Jackson market, is because uh, out of the two HBCUs uh, in, in the SWAC, and between Jackson and Lorman, um, Jackson State is in closer proximity to the television stations. So I can remember uh, times where Alcorn would have a much better record than JSU, uh, some of my years there, but still JSU would get more coverage because it was in closer proximity. Uh, And so what my plan is, uh, if, if I had to say that is, I want to as much as possible inundate uh, the television stations with good, um, positive stories from our athletic department and not just football, but other things like we just had our, our women's soccer team, uh, had an 11, zero victory uh, to open the season uh, yesterday. They've got a really good coach and coach Kevin Larry. So, you know, uh, and that sometimes is doing things as simple as instead of waiting on television stations to come here, because I have that background, you know, like, Saturday we had the scrimmage. Well, I'll if I need to, I'll shoot and cut and edit highlights and send sound bites to the station. You know, because uh, and sometimes at HBCUs we don't have that resource. But I remember when I was at um, WAPT, if I couldn't cover a Mississippi State game, they would send me highlights because they had someone shooting it. However, at the HBCUs like Valley. Uh, JSU, well, JSU was in the backyard, but uh, Valley and Alcorn, that wasn't the case. So we had to throw up a score, you know, a graphic if we couldn't get to the game. So what I'm saying is now uh, let's not give anyone an excuse as to why they're not covering. Let's make sure if no one's here, we get the information to them. And uh, and I, I think, especially when it comes to football, they're a hot enough ticket uh, right now because, you know, some people – would say they're still the defending champs, you know, they because they didn't play in the spring. A lie. <laughs> a lie. A lie. A championship is a championship, and they were not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm no, with no, you. But I, I mean, Huge props to Alabama A&M. You know, they, uh, I love Coach Maynard. He's, he's, a, he's a poop. I love him. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, no, but look, I, y'all I, have I, something to say about that, though. I mean, mm-hmm. what, what Dion's uh, put together, I, I mean, good Lord, that's just, yeah. that's amazing. It, it's amazing. And it's, um, he is definitely a marketing genius. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when it comes, you know, he, like yesterday, he tickles me so much. I, first of all, I love Dion because Dion has, He's still Dion from when he was Dion when we first met him. Yeah. This is not new. So yeah. you know, everybody, 
their complaints about, you know, some people are complaining. I'm like, but this is who he is. He's always been that guy. But yesterday he put a video up and he's, he was like, you know, I just got through watching film and such and such, but, and, you know, everybody think, you know, cause he always has these very, um, good little nuggets of wisdom that he'll give every day. And I'm thinking, you know, it's Sunday, he's going to give a good scripture. And he was like, but Jackson, I need to know who's cooking today. I want some, <laughs> <laughs> I want some soul food. And I mean, and it, it he, t- I'm like, oh my God, he is hilarious. So, yeah. but you know, and people feed him, you know, I, I, I was trying to get my sister to cook for him. I'm like, well, not yesterday when he um, was doing it earlier on, but he is a marketing genius. Um, I think it's a great thing that they have you because you're right. HBCU, especially SWACs, don't have a lot of the resources that bigger schools have. Mm-hmm. So now you know how to do all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, you know, so that's that's kudos for them. You know, they, they got a gold mine <laughs> in you. So they have a true gold mine in you. Marketing, um, broadcasting experience. You can edit. You can, you can do all of that. So that's great. Yeah. That is really great. So Josh, being a former football player, how important is it to, for you to shed positive light on these um, on these student athletes at all points? Yeah. Oh man, and it's on the other huge. side of it now. Yeah, it's huge because, uh, and I'll speak specifically for football players. Football players always, for some reason, get a bad rap. You know, I remember it. And and, and, and yes, football players a lot of testosterone. They're loud. They're mm-hmm. big. And so a lot of times, people are sometimes just intimidated. So they have these preconceived notions and, and, and they're not really, you know, all that, or they, you know, what they call them dumb jocks and whatnot. So mm-hmm. for me to shed a positive light, you know, generally speaking, uh, you don't really have a lot of, um, you know, bad reports coming from uh, Coach McNair's camp. Like he, he, uh, I don't want to say he rules with an iron fist, but they know not to get out of line with him. And so, mm-hmm. and I think he's a, he's a discipler. So, uh, with that being said, we've got there. There are going to be enough stories across the United States uh, in in college football this college football season with guys getting caught with drugs or getting kicked off kicked off the team mm-hmm. and whatnot. So uh, we need to highlight those positive stories. Those guys not just getting it done uh, in the uh, on the football field, but in the classroom as well. You know, guys right. that are on the all swag academic team and and what have you. So uh, that's my thing. You know, community service highlighting that. Uh, there are a lot of things that we do on campus and everything's not uh, a big enough story to go on television, right. but it can be a big enough story to be publicized. And so we have social media platforms. We have Twitter, we have Facebook, you know, and um, so we can kind of, you know, push that information out. And when others share it, you know, we not have as much of a viewing audience as we would at the ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox affiliates but it's getting out there and that's better than nobody hearing about it. So, and you know, I mean, any other time I would like, you know, I don't want to hear anything about all corn. However, Mm -hmm. I'm all about SWAC. I love all SWAC schools. Jackson state is just my favorite one. And so I want positive light shed on all of our schools because, you know, back to Dion, you know, he, he shed a huge light on SWAC schools in the past year and we're well, going on, yeah, past year almost. So that's very, that's very important. And I'm glad that you will be there doing that. So yeah, yeah, it's, awesome. it's going to, it's, um, and I'm not going to lie to you, uh, walking in last week, uh, I, I knew it would be somewhat of a challenge. Mm-hmm. I don't think I knew it would be as challenging, but I'm going to, and I have been embracing that challenge. Uh, we've got some work to do. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but what's going to be very helpful is these great coaches that we have making it a little bit easier when their programs are successful. And so, uh, then we can just, you know, promote. So, uh, that, that's my goal is, is for people to know, uh, what's going on out here, uh, you know, on the reservation, you know, we want, we want to get more publicity. Sure thing. Awesome. That's good. That's good. Well, Josh, before I let you go, I play a little game called You Can Get With This or You Can Get With That. Okay. And so what that is, that's a way for the listeners and myself to get to know our guests better. So I'll ask you a few questions and you just choose the one that fits, fits you better, okay? Okay. <laughs> Don't be afraid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, it's hot. So I was thinking about this one. Ice cream cone or snow cone? Snow cone. Snow cone. What's your flavor? I'll probably go with raspberry. Raspberry. Hmm, okay. Um, a wealthy friend or a loyal friend? Oh, yeah. Man, that's tough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have both. Uh, <laughs> But you know, I'm I'm really my language, like I'm really big on loyalty. Uh, wow. But you know what? If you have money, you can find a loyal friend. Let's, let's go with the let's go with the, the wealthy friend. I just knew you were gonna choose loyal. But he said, if you got money, now hey, you got a point. You got a point. Paperback or ebook? Oh, paperback. Yeah, I'm old school. Yeah, I me too. Know. I, you know, I, I'm on the computer enough for work. Taco yes. Tuesday or Wacky Wing Wednesday? I'm going with Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Yeah, What's yeah. your favorite, soft or hard shell? Oh, soft. Soft, yeah. okay. That's an easy one. Bacon and eggs or toast and eggs? Bacon and eggs. Okay. Although I, I don't, I'm trying not to eat pork anymore, but, <laughs> but you know, when I go home, Mama's cooking it, you know. <laughs> I wish they can take bacon away from pork because bacon is amazing. It is. Um, it no other meat smells like bacon. It it's just amazing. I wish they mm -hmm. can, you know, I agree. That's I be like, I don't eat pork, I eat bacon. They be like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel you. Um, well, this is gonna be you shopping in store or online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm more of an in-store guy because I like to try stuff on. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm not for all the, you know, getting it, taking it back. Like when I get it, listen, I'm that guy. And and if when I do have to shop online, mm -hmm. they probably make a lot more money off me because I'm not sending it back if it's the wrong size, like I you know, take it to Goodwill or something. But right. Yeah, so it's right. it's in store for me. Well, as far as food, you're gonna probably have to shop online. Uh <laughs> Or get you get you a, um, a a shopper. Yeah. You you're probably just gonna have to come to Sam's once a month up here or, or Costco mm -hmm. and get your food. <laughs> so. Yeah. No. You're 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 right about that. I mean, it's it's a bit of a hike now. Yeah. Um. Toilet paper over or under? You better say it right. No. Nah, no. Nah, listen. I, I think it kind of it kind of depends. I'm probably more of an under. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I hate that. And, and I'm big on I got to have I got to have a little extra his probably team a little extra <laughs> cushion. I can't I can't do the Scott's little soft stuff. You know, I got I I almost need like a towel. Like I you know <laughs> I need the, the, the thick tissue. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, now you, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> I'm an over girl. I, 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 under, that is so dumb to me. It, it's just, no. I can, I can like, see that though. I can see that. Yeah. And when I'm at somebody's house, if it's under, I change it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is dumb. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I know you're, you know, you into working out marathon or triathlon. Uh, probably marathon, yeah. Okay. Now listen, I, we, I, I'm into working out, but when I work, like I, I work out now mm -hmm. for one reason, and that's like to kind of keep myself together so that yeah. I can get married. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I mean, but like I'm saying, I is I do just enough. Like I, you Ooh. know, five k. I'm more of a five k, you know, than marathon guy. So yeah, yeah. How old are you, Josh? I'm trying. <laughs> Thirty two. <laughs> Hmm. I may have somebody I want you to meet. We'll talk later. Okay. Yeah. Are you dating? I'm not. Um, not right now. I um no, not right now. I, I just really haven't had the time uh here lately. Uh yeah, but it's been it's been several months since, since I've been in a relationship. Yeah. Look at me. Hmm. Yeah. Cool <laughs> um, meat lovers pizza or veggie pizza? Oh, meat lovers. Me lovers. Yeah. And Devin Hester or Ed Reed? Oh, Ed Reed. Oh, yeah. So I mean, I, you can't go wrong with either one of them. You know, I'm all about the you. Well, see, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Bear fan, so Devin. Devin uh, 
Okay. Well, I mean, I mean nothing, nothing against the Bears, but I mean the last time they were good, your boy Walter <laughs> Payton was there. So I mean, <laughs> um, mind your business. Who is your team? I'm a Saints guy. Oh you know, we 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 may have some struggles this year. I don't know, Jameis. It will, it, it will definitely be a drop off from Drew Brees. But I say Ed Reed. One of the reasons is because I play defensive uh, back too. I, know, I, I see him more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Devin Hester. But I see him more as when I think of him, I'm thinking about more of a special teams returner okay. guy. Yeah. But uh, but like you said, yeah, and yeah, Devin Hester played a little receiver too. Um, mm -hmm. He was just a guy like Dion could play anywhere. But uh, but yeah, Ed Reed. It, it was just something about him, just in terms of the motivation he would give and and whatnot. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I know he he great, and I've got some grades coming in too. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. I I need I need to go down to Jackson and get somebody to, to dye my hair uh, bl uh, black, but it's starting to come in on the sides. I don't know oh if it's stress or what. One one gray hair, please. Oh no, it's 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 as it grows out more. I I see it more, but when I used to have it low, you know, and I too, I don't know. I try to look a little bit older. I started growing a beard. I'm gonna have to cut it all off though. It's it's just too much work. Nice though, but you ought to do like Dion and get on on, on Instagram and Twitter. Be like, hey, who want to cut? Who who can cut my hair? <laughs> who can dye my hair? People will answer. So, I mean, yeah. But so. you know what? Um, that's that's funny, and I'm going to mention this because, believe it or not, I guess other than than uh, than uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. I went on a couple years ago. I went on a social media fast and uh, well, I had to have a page open for, for my job or whatnot. So they just had right. me create like a, a, a one that keep it connected. But I went on a social media fast and I deactivated my Facebook account, which that was the one that, you know, I was most active on and Twitter. And I didn't have the, the uh, Instagram. And uh, so I've been probably about two plus years now. I haven't had social media other than like work, uh, related stuff mm -hmm. and so uh most people will never understand this because it's like when the camera com comes on for me i'm all in but i'm one of the most introverted people ever like when we get through with this i'm so like not turned on i'm just like i'm to myself and i've always been that way but it's hard for people to understand that because people think i'm an extrovert because they say I smile a lot and I am in public, but like as a private person, I don't really go out a lot. I'm a big reader. You know, I just, I'm an introvert. Yeah. And see, and well, no, okay. I sing, I got this show. I'm a social person, but I tell my friends, I was like, I'm actually an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Yes. I mean, I like, I mean, and they be like, well, you always, I'm like, because if I get quiet, then it's like, well, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, nothing. I'm just, sometimes I don't answer my phone. I get it. I want, I like to be alone Yeah. sometimes, but I think when COVID first, when the pandemic first hit that first week, I was cool. And then the second week I was losing my mind because I'm a social person, but I'm still, I don't, it's weird. And yeah. I think maybe I'm not introvert. I think probably life happened to me and made me feel like you know going into myself but I don't know I, I get you though I feel you that's because yeah. we were friends on Facebook that's what happened then so okay yeah yeah I uh it's a couple years ago I, I deactivated it and um uh, when I what year was it 20 yeah but uh but I, I kept Twitter for a little bit longer because I used to get a lot of my stories from there mm -hmm. but uh but I ended up uh, deactivating that one too. But um, I mean, it's easier for me because it's like the people that contact me, mom, dad, when I'm dating, girlfriend, you know, family, it's just, I, I keep a really uh, close circle. Yeah. And it was funny when you reached out to me about the uh, uh, announcement, because I always wonder how people find out and whatnot, because I'm not, like I, I couldn't tweet oh, it. You're not, you know, you're, yeah. you're like the Amish. Oh, you're like the Amish. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, because I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at sports stuff all day long, and uh -huh. uh, actually, he was my dean, um, Howard Barty Jr. 
Remember how oh, he yeah. was my dean and he was the chair at um for sports administration. So he put it up and I was like, oh my gosh. And when I saw you in May, I told you I was gonna reach out and at you know yeah. to come on the show. So when I was like, this is the perfect time before he gets busy. So <laughs> I mean, well, you're already busy, but busier where you're not able to do too much. So yeah. so that's how that's how. So I'm always you know, at when I'm working at home. It's constantly on, you know, ESPN, Sports Center. So it's just, and then I get the updates, and it's a lot, but I love it. I do. Can I ask you a question? Yes. How did you get into sports, or did you did you have a lot of brothers growing up? Or was your I dad have, a big... I'm the youngest of three. My brother is the oldest. It's my father. Um, that's oh, okay. the picture, Jane Kennedy. Um, okay. My dad and I. Um, I was very close to my father. I was a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. And so one way to spend time with him was to watch sports. Uh, so I was five. That's when I started loving the Bulls and the Bears. Um, a lot of my daddy's family is in Chicago. So I spent a lot of time there. Okay. And around, I guess I may have been eight or so. And I saw her on the sidelines on CBS. And I said, I want to do that. And he said, you know, as a father, a good parent will say, you can do it. He may not have meant it, but he was mm -hmm. like, you know, because that was, she was the only black woman doing that at that time. Yeah. Um, that was the late seventies. And so it never left me. I've always, I mean, when I say a huge, would watch it all day, would cry if my beat the walls, if my teams lost and my daddy was like, you better go sit your butt down somewhere. Yeah. I, was, I was like really intense and never played sports. I'm 5'10" cannot play to wow. save my life, but yeah. I love sports. And so um, basketball is my favorite. So yeah, so that's how it happened. And I, when I lived in Dallas, I was planning on getting, I went to, um, I took my LSAT to go to um, law school to become a sports entertainment lawyer. Uh -huh. And while I was waiting on my LSAT scores, I found out about um, University of Dallas and Irving, they actually were starting a sports management program and I I got in it but was not focused and when I moved back here Bill Haven was starting their sports administration program and yeah wow wow yeah that's good to know yeah, hmm. so that's I didn't I know got. you were a singer too so yeah that... yeah um then I got a band um been singing for the Dallas Mavericks the, um, since 06 but I haven't because of the, pa uh, the nice. pandemic I haven't sang in two years but yeah, so, yeah. oh I listen oh one of these weekends well I guess we have football uh once football <laughs> season is over with let me know whenever y'all are playing in Jackson because I'll, I'll need to get out of the country for a little, little while now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I'll do. come support <laughs> I will do and well I know you won't be able to go to any Bellhaven um games because you'll be busy yeah, um, I, I'm gonna try to go. I'm gonna get somebody to go with me because, like you said, it's not the same. The band is. It's just gonna be different. But yeah, I can yeah. do it. I can do it. Yeah, I'm oh, gonna go different. support. I'm gonna go support. <laughs> well, <laughs> Josh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, before I let you go, tell the listeners how. I know you don't have personal social media, but you do have work social media. Well. Um, Technically, I mean, I'm running the Brave Sports, uh, at okay. Brave Sports, yeah, okay. and uh, the uh, Facebook page for, uh, and then we're in the process of, now, that's what I'm saying, it's an uphill battle, starting a new Instagram account, uh, okay. because the previous, it was some issues, but, but anyway, uh, yeah, so at Brave Sports, but I'm not like on the, I'm, I'm kind of the voice, and I'm put, for instance, with GMA Friday, uh, I'm just pushing the team up there. Like I'm not in front of the camera anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of the liaison, like making sure that they get their publicity. So, so yeah, yeah um, that is that. But also for any like young, young, you know, aspiring journalists, I always, you know, um, try to like give advice. I have so many different college students that have, you know, my number and contact information, email, and mm -hmm. they ask for advice because it's one thing, you know, um, I've learned is, you know, the importance of paying it forward. And, right. uh, you know, I just, I just want to, want to be able to give back. So, uh, so yeah, no doubt. Okay. And thank well, you for having me. You, you are so welcome. And guys, um, you can follow me at She Says She Says Sports on Facebook. 
She says she says sports 23 on IG. She said, I'm sorry, at she says she say 23 on Twitter. <laughs> and please subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube page. She says she says sports. Ooh, that's a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> until next time, this is Sonia with She Says She Says Sports.